Hey, what's up? This is Eric from Pyro86.com, and I got a question for you. Does your church or someone you know teach that when people are being baptized, that the exact phrase in Jesus' name must be quoted to validate a baptism? There are groups who demand that baptism must be done with a special formula. They claim that when a person gets dunked, when a person goes down into the baptismal waters, that the phrase in Jesus' name must be quoted to validate the baptism. Now those who teach this are simply wrong. They have misunderstood the scripture and thus misinterpreted its meaning. Now I suggest that we follow the clear instruction of Jesus found in Matthew 28:19. Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Notice that Jesus did not use the exact phrase, baptize in the name of Jesus, but he did say to baptize him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So the question I have is, why is there so much confusion about this? It seems like Jesus' commandment was clear. Well, the people who hold this position, that there is a special formula that must be quoted to validate a baptism, they often quote passages like Acts 2.38, Acts 8.16, Acts 10.48, Acts 19.5, Acts 22.16. And yes, if you read through these passages, you're going to see in each one of them some type of reference that does say that we must be baptized, every one of us, in the name of Jesus. I repeat, it does say, I am in agreement that these passages do declare that we must be baptized in the name of Jesus. However, what the passage does not say, it does not say, that in order for your baptism to be valid, you must carefully articulate the exact words in the name of Jesus before dunking someone. These verses have been misunderstood. The phrase, in the name of the Lord, has been misunderstood. This is not a reference to a baptismal formula, but more of a reference to authority. For example, You've probably seen it in the movies. You've probably seen it on TV. Somebody at some point in time stood up and said, Stop! In the name of the law! Now, we understand that when somebody says in the name of the law, they mean that by the authority of the law, I'm telling you to stop. It is in this manner, when we baptize someone in the name of Jesus, we're saying that we are baptizing this person in the authority of and with the authority of Jesus. It's more about authority and less about a special formula. Now, I want you to consider a few things. Acts chapter 4, verse 7 through 10 is a great passage. There is a sick man who got healed. And the rulers and religious leaders, they called a few of the disciples into the center and they began to inquire them. And they said this. They asked a question. They said, By what power or in what name have you done this? They were clearly asking a question about what authority? Who gave you the right to do this? By what power? What strength? And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, verse 8, he said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are on trial today for a benefit done to a sick man, as to how this man has been made well, let it be made known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, and whom God raised from the dead, by this name, by the authority of Jesus, he's saying, this man stands before you in good health. Throughout the rest of the book of Acts, we see this several times. In Acts 4, 17 through 18, the disciples were warned not to speak to anyone in the name of Jesus. They were also strictly ordered not to continue teaching in the name of Jesus, Acts 5:28. Acts 5.40, the disciples were flogged and ordered again not to speak in the name of Jesus. Acts 9.27-28, Barnabas gets together with the apostles and he tells them how Saul of Tarsus had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus, moving about freely, speaking in the name of the Lord. There was some radical stuff going on. Then, Acts chapter 16, verse 18, um, Paul, being grieved, he turned and he said to an evil spirit inside of a woman, he said, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And the spirit came out the very hour. 
The disciples were speaking, preaching, baptizing, casting out demons in the authority of Jesus. Jesus has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Now, when we call upon his name in baptism, when we call upon his name when speaking and preaching and casting out demons, we're calling upon his authority because the church is supposed to call upon the name of the Lord. We're supposed to call upon his authority because it's by the authority of Jesus that we Christians have the hope and right of forgiveness of sins and adoption into the family of God. So I ask the question again. Must a special formula of words be repeated to validate a baptism? The answer is no. And if I, what I shared in this video is not clear enough, I would just like to say this. Listen to Jesus, man. It is safe to listen to Jesus. You can trust him. And Jesus clearly told us, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit.